Okay, in this video, we are going to look into the I squared C bus on the AVR line of microcontrollers. Now, the I squared C is a popular serial synchronous protocol, and it's synchronous because there's an external clock involved. So, there's two lines there's the SDA, which is the data line, it's bi directional data line, and there's the SCL, which is the clock line, and there's my two pull up resistors. Now, this I squared C bus from my microcontroller is driving this IC, which is a PCF. 8574. It's an 8 bit IO expander, so it'll give you 8 more GPIO lines. And I have 8 LEDs connected up to the 8 lines, so we could actually write to these 8 LEDs. Now, if you want to read data, we could hook up a dip switch like this and connect it up, and then we could actually read the dip switch settings. So, in this video, we're going to have a look at how we could program the AVR line of microcontrollers for the I squared C bus. Okay, the I squared C bus was invented in 1982 by Philips Semiconductor, which is now called NXP, and the original name was called Inter Integrated Circuit, and it was originally designed for two ICs to, to communicate on a PC board. So in the beginning, it was called the IIC bus. Now, with a play on words and mathematics, we got I squared C, because I squared is I times I, which we get II, so it became I squared C bus. Now, back in 1982, everybody was running DOS on their PC, which was text-based. So, the, wor the word processor did not support a little subscript. So, anybody writing about the I squared C bus had to write I2C on the word processor. So, now we got I2C. Now, you'll also see TWI, two-wire interface. And that's by ABR, that's Atmel, because of copyright issues. So, they called their bus the TWI, two-wire interface. Now we also have the SMB bus, System Manager bus, and that came out in 1994-95 by Intel. And it's basically uh, the same as uh, the I squared C bus, it was based on it. So anytime you see TWI, I2C, I squared C, or IIC, that's basically the same bus. Okay, here's the basic setup of the I squared C bus. And if you notice, it's called a TWI bus because this is an Atmel data sheet. Now we can see our devices connected up to the bus consisting of SCL, which is our clock line, and SDA, which is our data line. It's a bi-directional data line. And all the devices are open collector, so we need pull-up resistors from the bus to VCC. You can see R1 and R2 are the two pull-up resistors. Now those values could be anywhere from 2K to 10K, depending on how many devices we have on the bus. The more devices we have on the bus, the lower the resistance of those two pull-up resistors. Now, in my case, I'm using 4.7K on my uh, pull-up resistors on my breadboard. Now, the, there is a master and, and slave relationship between the devices, and whatever device initiates the start condition first becomes the master device. Okay, every I squared C packet starts with a start condition and ends with a stop condition. I call them my bookends. So a start condition is designated as S, and a stop condition is designated as P. Now when both control lines, the SCL and SDA, are high, that's defined as an idle condition. Now when we get a high to low transition of the data line while the clock is high, that's defined as a start condition. And when we get a low to high transition of the data line while the clock is high, that's defined as a stop condition. And the first device that initiates a start condition becomes the master device. Okay, I got my Nano powered up and it's running a program that's talking to my PCF 8574 GPIO expander IC over the I squared C bus. So now we can send data from a mecha controller and drive my eight LEDs. And I could drive them in sequence. I have a little program, so I'll start it. You can see there it's driving my LEDs. So my GPIO expander IC is syncing current, which is turning on each of the LEDs. So I'll shut off that little program. Now to read data, we could use a dip switch, but I don't have a dip switch, so we could just ground the inputs. Now we could read data over the I squared C bus into our microcontroller. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, and it's connected to my breadboard. So I could run a little program that will read my eight inputs. So I'll run it. So you can see there, the pull-up resistors are all high, so we're getting one. So now if I use my little jumper and ground each input, there's my first one at the very right. You can see we get a zero. Now if I go across, you can see it's reading each one as I'm grounding each input. 
And that's all eight. So that's how we read using the I2C bus. Okay, here's the block diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard. And on the left, you can see the Arduino Nano. And on the right, you can see the PCF8574 GPIO expander IC, which is being powered by the Nano 5 volts. Now, pins A4 and A5 of the Nano are connected over to SDA SCL, that's your data and, and clock lines, with the two pull-up resistors, so that's our I2C bus. Now, the output of the GPIO expander IC is pins P0 to P7, and they're open collectors, so they sync current, so when P0 goes low, it'll turn on the LED. Now, if you want to read data, we send the value FF uh, to the expander IC, and, and all the pull-up resistors will be enabled on the open collectors. And then we just ground this pin, this, uh, the P0 or P7, P0 to P7, and that will input data into the expander IC and that will be sent over the I2C into the Nano for the read function. Okay, next, we are going to have a look at some I2C waveforms on my scope. And I've written some code and my two main words are I2C write and I2C read, so we could actually send data now to my expander IC and we could watch the waveform on my scope. So there's my first command. So hex A5 is my data. And hex 20 is the address of my expander IC. And I2C write is my command. So we'll send that. And you see my scope has decoded that. So you can see a W for write, hex 20 for the address, and then hex A5 for the data. Now I could do that again. And this time we'll send hex ff send that you can see my scope decoded that so you can see w for write hex 20 for address and hex ff for the data so we send hex ff so that actually enabled all the pull-up resistors on the gpio expander ic so next we'll do a read we'll do a read and we'll actually read all F's because we sent all F's in the last statement. So we'll do a read. And you can see on my scope, we have a read, R for read, hex 20 for the address, and FF is the data. And if you look on the screen, the data is written back, FF. Okay, next, we are going to have a look on how we could program the address of the PCF8574 IC. Now I2C addresses are 7 bits long with the 8th bit being the read write bit so 0 equals write and 1 equals read. Now on the PCF8574 chip addresses A3 to A6 are fixed which you can see here. So we change A0 to A2 so in my case I grounded A0, A1 and A2 you can see here in the chart so that makes my address 20 hex. Now if we add the read write bit, if we add 0 as the write bit, then our byte will be 40 hex and our read will be 41 hex. So my address will be 20 hex. Now if you have a PCF8574A, the addressing is different. Now if we go down, we have a look, the fixed part is different. So make sure you check your chip if it's a PCF8574A then you would use this chart here. Okay, next, we are going to have a look at a write and read operation on the I2C bus. So first, we'll start out with a write to a slave device. You can see in the top diagram. So first, we have a start condition. Then we have a 7-bit slave address. And 8th bit is the write bit, which is 0. And that's sent. That byte is sent. Now, each byte is acknowledged by a slave device. So we get an act back from the slave. Now on a ninth clock bit, the slave pulls the data line low, and that indicates an ACK, so that's in yellow. Then the, then the master sends uh, another byte of data, and it gets the ACK back. Another byte of data gets the ACK back, and it keeps on doing that until it wants to stop. Then it sends the stop condition, which you see there as a P. So that's your simple write to slave device. Now on the bottom, we can see you read from a slave device. So we start it with a start condition, and we have the 7-bit slave address, and the 8th bit is one indicator read and we send that so we get an act back because we just sent a byte now it sends data back from the slave now the master has to do an act so the master will pull the data low on the ninth clock clock pulse and that's the act from the master 
and then the slave will send more data and the master will send an ACK. Now when the, when the master wants to stop receiving data, it sends a NACK. So it doesn't pull down the data line on, on the ninth clock pulse, then it initiates a, a stop condition. So that's your basic read from a slave device. Okay, if you want to write code for the I2C bus, for the AVR line of microcontrollers, you have to deal with four registers in the microcontroller. Now I've written some code in fourth using these four registers, and here's the four registers and their addresses. So you have the bit rate register, the control register, the status register, and the data and address register. So the bit rate register, if we take hex value 48 and write that to the bit rate register, they'll set up an I2 speed, I2C speed of 100 kilohertz. So I have a word called 100 kilohertz. If I, if I type that at the OK prompt or put that in my code, they'll set up my I2C, I2C speed to 100 kilohertz. And I have other words. There's start, there's stop, there's send. So if I write hex A4 to the control register, that will be a start condition. And if I write hex 94 to the control register, that will be my stop condition. So I made up these words start, stop. So if I type them at the OK prompt and put them in my code, it will actually run this code and, and give me a stop function. So I have read with NAC, read with ACK. I have I2C write. I have I2C read. So we'll go down to the programs that I ran in the beginning of the video. So there's a word called IO, 2IO, it's pronounced 2IO. So if I write a character at the OK prompt and then type 2IO, it will send that character to my GPIO expansion IC. So here's my LED program. So my first line, I configure my speed to 100 kilohertz and I send FF to the chip. That will enable all the pull-ups. Now I send these bytes. I have some bytes here in binary and that will be sent to the chip. So the first byte, you can see zero, so my first LED is on. The next one, second LED, third LED, you can see I'm, I'm cycling. I'm sequencing through all LEDs until I get all off. Then it repeats, goes back to the beginning. And that's how I control my LEDs. Now the next one is input. And that reads my dip switches, so that's going to be a read function. For my first line, I set the speed to 100 kilohertz. I send hex FF to my chip which enables all the pull-ups. Then I go into a begin until loop. It's a continuous loop. So address 20 is my chip. I'm doing a read every 50 milliseconds. And that'll read my dip switches continuously for my read function. Okay, so that was my little primer on the I squared C bus for the AVR line of microcontrollers. So if you want to practice writing your own code for the I squared C bus, you could build a setup similar to this. Just get yourself a PCF 8574IC and plug it into the breadboard. And you see I have pins 1, 2, and 3 grounded, so that's my address A0, A1, A2. So that configures this chip as uh, address hex 20. Now you could get this chip on a module online. It might be easier for some of you guys. You just plug it into, you just plug it into, the, into the board and wire it up. And it's a good chip to, uh, to work with because you have instant feedback of your LEDs for your write function and if you've got a dip switch for your read function. So you could do read and write functions and you get instant feedback so that works out pretty good. And you could use the language of your choice, whatever programming language that you're familiar with because you just have to configure those four registers, flip the bits in those four registers to, uh, to configure the I squared C bus. So I hope this video gives you some ideas how you could build your own little setup so you could practice writing code for the I squared C bus.